Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Uh, so today I want to talk about our approach to measuring generalization of process models. And uh, this is a joint work uh, together with Alistair Moffat here in the University of Melbourne and Luciano Garcia Banuelas from Mexico. Uh, so I hope you can hear me well and see me well. I'm just pro proceeding without any indication that I hope everything goes goes well. Um, so let's immediately jump into the context. So um, we are working with discovered models, models discovered from event logs that are recorded by IT systems. Uh, so here you see a sample log, and a log is a, nothing but a collection of traces, where each trace describes a sequence of actions that was recorded by a system, for example, IT system. An IT system is there to support and control what happens in the real world. So by discovering a model or from an event log, we explain what is happening in the real world so we can understand, we can uh, maybe take decisions and actions to improve what we observe in the real world, what happens in the real world. And of course, we are interested to, in discovering not any model, we are interested in discovering good models, and these models should faithfully encode uh, the behavior of the system. So usually we use several quality dimensions to, to measure how good uh, is our discovered model, and we say that the models should have good recall, so it should uh, represent uh, traces from the log. So it should contain those traces that we see in the log. For example, trace A, D, E, E, F, model can replace. So if we say that the model replace a trace, if we have a walk from initial node I to final node O, we have that walk. We can do A, D, E, repeat E, then do F, and then conclude. So that contributes to a good recall. However, repeating E many times will not help in measuring precision, which tells us that uh, models shouldn't describe traces that are not in the log, right? And for, obviously, if we repeat E for many times, we haven't observed that behavior in the log, so that will not be good for precision of this model. And generalization then measures how well our discover model can anticipate future traces of our system, so how well that model describes traces that the system will generate in the future. And good simplicity basically tells us that uh, consistently with all other quality constraints, our model should be simple enough. So it should be easy to read, should be easy to understand by people, should be overcomplicated. So this is a general setting we are operating in. And in this setting, three artifacts are of interest. And of course, sorry, this in this work, we're interested in the measure of generalization. So right, we are proposing approach how to measure generalization. And uh, in this setting, three artifacts are in the focus. So we have a system which can be given as a, a sum model that describes traces a system can generate in the real world. We have a log, so a collection of those traces that were observed and recorded. And we have a discovered model. And all of these artifacts can be seen as collections of traces. Uh, right, so um, model describes some collection of traces, system uh, can generate some collection of traces, log is a sample of some traces that the system has generated. And if you put it as a Venn diagram, in a more general case, we, we can see this Venn diagram, and I hope you trust me that I can meaningfully explain any of the sectors in this Venn diagram. For, ex for instance, sector one uh, tells us that those are the traces that uh, that are in the log, maybe by error because system can cannot generate it, and they were included in the model because maybe our frequency. So A D E E F is a frequent trace. It cannot be generated by the system, but because of the frequency, it was discovered by a model. So this is a general setting we are operating, and then. Uh, in the past, in the work of yours boys, uh, Bodwan Van Dongen and Will Van Rust, uh, four quality dimensions were proposed, so uh, precision recall, generalization, simplicity, and also it was proposed that we can address measuring uh, those quality dimensions by 
pairwise comparisons of these artifacts. So, for example, I can measure relevance of a model to a log through these two quotients of model log precision, where I'll be comparing model traces and log traces. So I take the intersection, I measure the cardinality, and then I put it in perspective to the uh, number of traces a model can support. And also I can then measure model log uh, recall analogously, and then I can compare, for example, system and log, uh, and get corresponding precision and recall measures. I can compare model and system as well. Um, and that's very nice. It's very theoretically grounded, very nice approach. Uh, and by the way, then if we think a bit thoroughly about this, um, then these quotients of model system precision recall, they somehow contribute to measuring of uh, generalization. Because, well, if uh, model and system traces coincide, these measurements will be equal to one. And of course, if traces coincide, that model can anticipate all the future traces of our uh, of our system, right? We can generate, uh, well, model describes all the traces of the system, so it anticipates them quite well. All right, so this is what kind of state of the art. This is understanding of how we can approach uh, measuring the quality. And in general, if in this uh, exercise of measuring these six quotients from this slide, the old all approach the value of one, right? So that means that kind of we, we are in good quality. The model describes log well, log doesn't have too much of noise. It, it covers all the behavior of a system. Model corresponds to a system very well. So that's kind of the common goal that we will be trying to achieve in a process discovery exercise. So far, so good. Uh, but we need to now kind of overlay realistic assumptions about this setting. Uh, and if you do that, we need to understand that the system is unknown. So we don't know the system. If we would know the system, why would we be discovering a model that system in the first place? We could just take a system model and we will be using it as a representation of what happens in the reality. Also, it's kind of clear that uh, a system uh, is not the software code that runs in the IT system. It can, it's more like uh, what, how system is used in the real world, right? So it can be just part of the functional level system that gets used. And that's what we want to discover and, uh, and represent. So system is unknown. And also those collections of traces defined by model and system in general can be infinite. So I blurred here the system model to say that it's unknown. Uh, but for example, from the model, uh, you can see that it allows some repetitive behavior. So I can repeat E, I can after F return and do A again. So essentially I can, I can generate a lot of traces, infinitely many of those by taking the loop over and over again. And um, right, and by taking these realistic assumptions, uh, what happens is that my carefully engineered assumptions and this theory starts to fall apart. Like this carefully constructed house of cards, right? I just uh, touch it, I, uh, intrude its stability and it collapses and that's what we also observe in that nice theoretical picture because once we acknowledge that the system is unknown and collections of traces defined by model and system can be in general infinite uh, well we cannot measure almost uh, well every of those quotients we we can measure model log recall right um, well we have a log that's the starting point of our discovery exercise. We can measure the intersection of model and log. Log is finite, even if model describes infinite collections of traces, the intersection is finite, but all other traces, all, all, sorry, all other measurements, all other components in red, we cannot measure. We cannot measure cardinality of a model because, well, it's infinity. Uh, well, we can measure, we can accept it as infinity, but then we can compare any systems that, define, that describe infinite collections of traces. We don't know the system, so we cannot measure a system log precision and recall. We also cannot measure model system precision and recall because, well, we don't know system. A collection of traces defined by a model can be in general infinite, etc. So we are, we are kind of in a bad situation. And um, in this work, we are looking closely how to address the problem of that unknown system. 
the problem of infinite traces, we had an approach that addresses a problem and we used, instead of measuring cardinality, we used the notion of entropic, uh, sorry, of entropy, of topological entropy uh, to estimate the cardinality of those infinite sets. Uh, and we, are, we got some good results and we actually rely on those results in this work. But this work uh, that I present today uh, concentrates uh, on the problem of understanding this unknown system. And to do that, we use the method from computational statistics uh, called bootstrap, uh, bootstrap method. Uh, and I will briefly introduce you this method so you can understand that method and then you can relate it to what we do in the context of uh, measuring generalization of a discovered process model. So imagine you have a population uh, of elements and you want to understand a property, you want to measure some property of that population. So let's say you have a collection of all the stars in the universe and you want to measure uh, the average mass of a star in the universe. So you cannot you cannot access all the stars. You cannot go and measure mass of every individual star. So your best bet would be to take many samples of stars. Let's say in Melbourne here we take 100 stars, we measure their mass, we take the average, and we get one data point. In Belgium and Leuven, you take another sample of 100 stars, you measure their average, and you have a second data point. And you do this repeatedly uh, for many uh, samples, for thousands, for millions of samples. You get many data points, and then you get distribution of the average, and that's kind of the estimation of, of your average value. But, of course, you understand that taking many such samples is also infeasible. You cannot take millions of samples of stars and measure their averages. You can probably take a couple of samples, um, but not many of those. So bootstrapping method tells, tells us, OK, we cannot do that. We cannot take many samples, but we should have at least one sample to start with. So we take one sample of stars, we take 100 stars, and this is our starting point. From that sample, we estimate the population. We say, okay, maybe we know something about the about our population, so we can estimate it based on the sample. In the worst case, we take a sample as an estimated population. And now, from this estimated population, we can draw samples on a computer in silico. We don't need to go in space and find new samples of stars uh, to, to, create, to create our data points. So what we do, we take our estimated population and we start constructing bootstrap samples. Again, many of those just by drawing elements from our estimated population. And then we can measure the average for every of those um, uh, samples uh, if we are interested in average mass of stars. And then we can construct such a bootstrapped distribution of, of the property we are interested in. And if we do it many times for big samples, uh, that distribution will surprisingly estimate the true distribution very well. So um, that's the bootstrap method in a nutshell. And of course, let's I, I just want to present you how it works uh, if you if you simulate something like that. So I just took Excel and did some simulation. So imagine the true distribution of masses of stars is a normal distribution. We don't know it, but assume it is. And then I took 1,000 samples of 100 stars from that distribution and measured their average of each sample. So I got 1,000 averages. And then I plotted the histogram of those averages. And you see that, okay, this, this histogram then estimate the average very well. So it's zero, close, very close to zero. You can measure some, uh, some statistical properties, error of, of that average, etc. Uh, right, so you can do further statistical analysis, but we cannot do that. We cannot do thousand samples; it's just not realistic. So instead, I took one sample out of those thousand samples. This is now a histogram of uh, hundred elements drawn from a distribution on the left-hand side. So I just have one sample, hundred stars. I know their masses, and this is a histogram. And then I have drawn thousand samples. Uh, from this sample. So I just accepted this as a true population. Uh, and then I took 1,000 samples and, and plotted the histogram 
of thousand averages of all, the, all those thousand samples. And you see that that average of the that I get from these thousand data points very well estimates uh, um, the true average. And so this is a trick that the bootstrap method can achieve. All right, so this is bootstrap method in a nutshell. And uh, with that understanding, now I hope I can present you our approach to measuring uh generalization of discovered process models and maybe some of you can already uh envision anticipate uh, what what we are doing so we are back to the setting of our traces we go back from stars to traces and our universe of stars is now our system it's a universe of traces which we cannot really sample in ideal case we want to take many samples of those and then estimate the property based on those samples but we don't have that we just have one sample we have event log we have one sample and we accept that sample as a true population so as a, as a representation of a true population of a true system, system traces and then we continue with the bootstrap method we bootstrap many samples l1 to lm and then we use those samples to measure the properties of a system, to estimate properties of a true system. So we, we still measure uh, generalizations as model system precision and recall. Instead of cardinalities, we are using our entropy approach that I briefly mentioned. Uh, for more information, you can look into the paper and follow the references and, and find out more about that method but basically what we can do we can measure infinite collections of, uh, of traces and uh, given uh, uh, given a model and a system if we know those we can uh, well we can measure the values of, of um, precision and recall between model and system just to have the ground truth so to say but what we do by bootstrapping we, we are measuring many uh, model bootstrap sample precision and recalls all right, we take M samples of log, we, we, we measure many, many, many of those, and then we build statistics across, across those many, many bootstrapped samples. Uh, so at this stage, I just want to say a few words how we construct those bootstrapped samples. So, so it's not just a naive approach how we do it, we also uh, take what, what is called a semi-parametric approach, to, to constructing those bootstrap samples. So for example, you have a log. This is a running example log. Uh, and the bootstrap sample may look like this one. Right? So it can contain new traces. We can generate new traces uh, while we're constructing a sample. How we achieve that? Well, we use some ideas from genetics. We do some crossovers between different traces. So we pick two traces from original log, and that by chance can be the same trace. We do a crossover. So we pick two random traces, and we cross over them on some common information, on common subtrace. So we need to define the length of the subtrace. For example, in this case, I use a sub common subtrace of length of two. Uh, and there are multiple sites where these traces uh, have, have the same subtrace of length two. For example, here we have a site of subtrace DB, and here we have another site of subtrace DB, and then we take suffix of the trace up to and including that common subtrace, and uh, sorry, we take prefix and uh, that, that includes that common subtrace and a suffix that includes that common subtrace, and we do a crossover to obtain a fresh trace. But we kind of generate of all string from those two original traces and we can write we can then by doing that we can construct a fresh trace a b b c f which we include in the sample and we can construct a fresh trace a b b b b c f and we also include it in our bootstrap sample all right so that's how we construct our bootstrap samples and um, just just coming back to the running example and uh, showing how this bootstrapping helps to improve the measurements of generalization so if we accept that we know the system in this controlled experiment of the run example, and we measure those quotients of, of model system precision and recall using our entropy methods, 
we get the value of 0 0.867. So this is the uh, this is the ground truth. This is what the value really is if we know the system. But of course, we don't know the system. If we don't know the system, one approach we can say, okay, let's use log as uh, as estimation of our system behavior, and let's measure generalization as model log precision and recall. And then we get values of 0 0.791 and 0 0.935. Of course, they're different from the ground truths. We use log instead of the system. But if we start using our bootstrapping approach, what we observe that by increasing the size of the bootstrap sample and by doing more and more bootstrap samples and then measuring the statistics of them, the values of, um, uh, of our precision recall start getting closer and closer to the true values of the uh, model system precision. And recall. So we still don't have clarity, but at least we get some more insights in the correct uh, behavior of the system and we get more and more correct measurements as we do more and more samples of a larger size. So that's basically our approach uh, that we follow. Uh, and the conclusions uh, are the following. So we were able to show in the paper that we this way we can achieve a consistent estimation generalization if we assume that systems are models as directly followed graph. So right in the, in the industry, uh, we industrial tools often discover DFGs. So they said, OK, if industry discovers uh, models as DFGs, maybe it's reasonable to assume that systems are also DFGs. And if that, we, we accept that assumption, again, right, it's an assumption, how realistic it is, it's another question. But then we can demonstrate that our uh, um, estimation of generalization is consistent. Consistency means that by creating larger samples and more of samples, our values get closer and closer to true values of generalization. We did some experiment with uh, 60 industrial DFGs, and all those examples we observed that our values of estimated generalization get closer and closer to true values as the size of the samples and number of samples grows. Uh, details are in the paper. Um, um, right, we can use, in principle, we can use different generalization measures, not only those quotients that we used, uh, but uh, also that bootstrapping method can be combined with other generalization measures, measures that exist in the literature. It's a computational method, so it's really resource demanding. So it takes a lot of computational resources to generate samples, uh, to, to measure properties over those samples. Um, and of course, uh, well, quality depends on the on the seed event log. If you give me a starting event log of one trace uh, and the system behind is very complex, yeah, you get, get some quality out of this bootstrapping mechanism, but you will not be able to rediscover the system, right? So, so you will be constrained to some some future work ideas uh, to study more formal properties, uh, right? There were some properties proposed for measures of generalization. Uh, generalization is perhaps the least understood quality dimension in process mining. Uh, existing techniques were demonstrated to not fulfill all the properties that were put forward by the community. Uh, so maybe we can study how well our uh, approach to measuring generalization satisfies those properties. Uh, there can be other methods of how you construct bootstrap samples that will maybe uh, be well suited for other classes of systems, not DFGs, maybe well, safe systems, general uh, well, elementary petri nets or some other classes of systems. Um, right, so, so that's basically the last bullet point that I have on this slide. So then I want to wrap up my presentation with at this stage. And if you have any questions, I hope you could hear and follow my presentation well. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Artem.
And uh, I would like uh, to invite the audience uh, to engage in some physical activity for asking your questions, because as you can see, I'm standing here to the room microphone. And I would invite those asking questions to come up front here, so that we can make sure that Artem can understand us well. So if you have any questions, please come closer here. Um, and uh, yep. So do you hear us, Artem? That's the first question. I can hear you, Jan. I hear you very well. It's a microphone that you OK, good. So this position well. here seems to be good. Uh, so please come up front here. Uh, and in the meantime, I want to ask one question to Artem. Um, so, um, well, you know best that this uh, work uh, that motivates these entropy measures is in transactions on software engineering methodology. Uh, so I wonder, when you look at this picture that we don't know the system and that we have traces, uh, how, how does that resonate from your point of view with problems of testing systems and to generate test cases? Maybe you can say a word on this and then we have the first question from the audience. Ah, that's a very good question. Uh, at some stage I was writing a grant proposal to actually uh, generate, to study the test, to generate test cases of a system, uh, of a known system. And, um, uh, it's difficult. You can use maybe you can use entropy and, and these bootstrapping methods to understand the coverage of, of your test cases, right? Because you yeah. don't know the system, and you can, in principle, generate test cases, collection of test cases, and then use this bootstrapping method to, uh, to understand the coverage. That's actually a good idea. I just came to me uh, while I was thinking of, uh, to answer uh, on answer to your question, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So uh, the first question here. Uh, please come up front, and uh, here's also the camera, so Artem can see you. And please speak also to the mic. Okay. Thank you for this interesting talk. Um, I have a question about this um, cross trace generation. It feels a bit counterintuitive, right? Because you mess, you assume there's an underlying symbolic model and you mess with it, so it might affect desirable properties of um, your approach that are yet to be studied, right? But what is your intuition? So why do you think that this is unconcerning, let's say? So I'm not sure why you think uh uh, why well, I think it's counterintuitive because in the paper we show if you do a crossover this way, the resulting trace uh, is a trace of a system. So if the system is DFG and you do crossover this way, that resulting trace can be accepted by DFG. Of course, up to the way we define what is accepted by DFG, but 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 just assuming like a reasonable approach of walking through the DFG, the resulting trace will be accepted. Okay, so you, you essentially say that you assume some properties of the system that guarantees that you can do this cross-tracing uh, and the underlying properties of the system will still for be some the same. Systems, for some systems, this crossover will lead to the trace which will be accepted by a system. For some systems, it may not. I don't know, maybe for some class of Petri nets, some resulting traces will not be accepted. But still, even then, it may be that uh, such bootstrapping method will work at the end. We, you need to you need to study uh, how it will write. So it's, it's a traces maybe some are noise and they're not accepted, but a good share of such uh, generated traces will be accepted. Uh, so you see, bootstrapping method, it, uh, some variation of bootstrapping method, they they rely on how you generate the sample. And here it can be a, a whole area of how you study different ways to generate a bootstrap sample. And we just mm -hmm. proposed one, we observed that it works, but there can be other methods. And that's also a possible direction for future work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thanks. I, I would also say at least it seems to be something that can be studied more. Thank you, Timotez. Yeah. Thank you for this question. Yeah, please come up front. There's one more question, Artem. Hi, Artem. Uh, yeah, uh, from Sydney. So uh, we're quite far away, but we're actually quite close. Uh, 
Very good. Yeah, it's a really wonderful talk, and you really inspired me um, because uh, bringing statistics into it. Um, uh, I think what you've done is to, to uh, one thing that I was going to ask you is uh, now, based on the data that you generate, you have some form of measurement of reliability. We haven't got that validity measure yet because you said you've got the space, you haven't. But I, I was thinking uh, about generating samples. Let's say, uh, if, if whether you would think extend this to if we want to generate uh, the data into a particular specific model, let's say uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, tools that we use, and then we follow those tools and then generate a sample to some way of calculating a power, like statistical power, and then after that, uh, then you might be able to test against whether that model generated has some reliability measure to it. So that's whether you consider it. The other one is, uh, have you considered how to look at the validity part of, of using this type of uh, approaches? So uh, that, that's the two question, maybe uh, something that uh, uh, I've been thinking it as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you very much for the talk. I really learned a lot. Well, very good questions, very good questions. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that like, Extensive answer will need a lot of time. I'll give a short answer. So far, we looked into empirical validation, right? So uh, we, we empirically validate, and to some classes of system, we prove that, uh, that we will achieve consistency of the estimation. Uh, all those things that you mentioned that are typically done for the bootstrap methods, they still to be need to be they need to still to be studied more thoroughly right? so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of work that can be done so it's future work all right artem here's one more question from the audience please come here that artem yeah. can see you hello thank you for a very interesting talk um when i look at a system one of the questions i see, one of the things i see with a system is most of the time when it system makes a decision that's not an arbitrary choice, but it's actually a property of the underlying, say, process instance or whatever you want to call it. There's, there's attributes. We might not know what they are in the process. And I think it's something like, uh, do you think your process or, or your approach would, would work or maybe even be enhanced if you actually say, okay, well, what we're trying to do is to, to kind of almost also look at the properties of the underlying instances because in most cases it's not really the, so the decisions are driven by the inputs not by the system per se yeah that's a very good point that's a very good point but you see the classical process mining starts with traces which are just sequences of actions yeah. right? there are more advanced techniques that look to discover decision points there was a talk in this session um, and and I agree. I agree. So a better model, a better model that explains reality, what happens in reality, will include decisions, right? So because otherwise it's too abstract. Uh, yeah. But at this stage, we are not looking at those decisions. Yeah. Uh, we are still operating on that abstract level, only sequences of actions. And I agree there can be some uh, intricate dependencies that may can help you to generate bootstrap samples that if, if you have some attributes, data attributes and decision that were information about decisions that were done on top of those attributes, maybe you can do more precise uh, generation of traces or estimation of future traces of the system. Yeah. But at this stage, we don't go that we don't look that deep. I mean, one of the things is I think it, it might work, I mean, it's just a, an idea, is to actually try to identify attributes that are existing and, and that are driving those decisions. Yes, yes, good point, right? Uh, some event logs, they contain attributes that can be used. Uh, yeah, if you, if you contact me after the talk, uh, we can discuss further. It's an yeah, interesting topic. All right, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much for your question.